Katie's got rights. I'm in the waiting room of the kid's dentist, devouring the travel magazines. I've just read an article all about the David Bowie exhibition at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. Could something like this inspire a scrapbook page? Glitter Girl, can you help Katie Scott go from space oddity to scrapbook stardust? Of course I can. I'm glad you asked this question because the exhibit itself is almost like walking through a giant life-size scrapbook. Davy Bowie kept everything um, from his entire career, from his very first scribblings of um, writing lyrics and drawing pictures of what he thought his band should look like, right through to albums and costumes and all of that stuff. So walking through the exhibit is um, definitely a, a scrapbooker's dream and I think something that would inspire a scrapbooker even if you weren't a fan of David Bowie himself. But I want to stay specifically with things from the exhibit that inspired me. I, I don't know that it's possible to cram them all into one layout but I'm going to try and point out some highlights. Um, first thing I wanted to do was take a little bit of a nod from design cues that appear in some really iconic David Boy imagery and one of them would be that there's a lot of orange um, it's a, a a lot of bright color in general but orange is a, a theme that appears in multiple places and I also thought I would stick with chevron because there's a lot of zigzag in the David Bowie art but there's also a lot of this lightning bolt type stuff and some of the most iconic images are um, the ones with the lightning bolt painted on his face. I think um, I toyed with the idea of should I use this in this direction so that it does look like a lightning bolt but I think with the photo I'm going to use it's a little too jarring so I'm going to take it back to this side um, and the photo I'm going to use that was another point and a lot of the exhibit focuses on things from the 70s. There's a lot before that and a lot after that, but of course there's quite a lot during the 70s. So I decided I would pull out a, a 70s photo and um, work with that so that I'm working with that kind of authentic warm color of that time. And um, just don't laugh too much at my friend mild-mannered Shamal Lane there, and uh, we'll move right along. <laughs> uh, so the other thing I wanted to include was this orange print. Now the, both of these pattern papers are from the Hello Again collection by Cartabella and this with the the heart that's in a little bit of a more industrial modern art type style rather than the traditional rounded heart. Um, again with the orange and a little bit of kind of a grayish aqua tone seemed very much in keeping with some of the different design aspects. Even to the point where um, David Bowie's early drawings of different costumes and things used this technique of, of taking a square and dividing it into four triangles that, that meet at a point in the middle and then building out from there. Um, it was something that, that he included in a lot of his sketches, so this caught my eye. Um, I, don't, I can't think that he included lots of hearts in the sketches, but that, that building technique of the four triangles in a square. Now, the next paper is going to be one that um, may be one of those times where you go, oh, I don't know, Glitter Girl, this paper is a bit of an odd choice. So my next paper choice is this star print called Stargaze from the Pebbles Lakeside Collection. And stick with me. Um, I wanted to keep I wanted something that would capture that space age feeling and the fact that there's so much of... Um, of an influence from the space race and space travel that was going into David Bowie's career. Also, um, my mom-mannered <laughs> friend, Jamel Lane, was born at the same time that the Voyager space probes went out, and so her entire life is kind of measured in the places where a Voyager would report back from. So she's a little bit obsessed with things like space travel. So that was something that was really interesting in the exhibit is being able to tie together how um, all of that space coverage in the media was actually inspiring people to make music and performance and all sorts of things like that. And here it is in pattern paper trend form. So I'm going to um, embrace this blue as a contrast, even though I know that's a little bit of a different style from all this um, orange, I think it can make it work. To bridge the gap between that, I wanted to bring in a baby blue color so that I have something that's a little less extreme. I'm not going to use a lot of the baby blue, just use it as a nice little um, mat to, to, so that they, there's not such a harsh difference between the orange and the navy. And this is from American Crafts Mayberry Collection. 
the other side is a blue floral, but I just want the, the plain notebook paper. And then I'm thinking I may use some of the cut apart sheets from the Hello Again collection as well. Um, we'll see how that comes together. So that's my plan to get started and we'll see where David Bowie takes us. To build my page, I am starting with this uh, chevron watercolor print in the very background. And then my largest box of paper is going to be the star print. And I want that to be a large box that will be sitting in the background and quite a bit of it will be covered up. But the idea that this is something that is kind of metaphorically in the background, that the space was something that inspired a lot of um, of the music and the exhibit and, and all these sorts of things. So I wanted that as the larger piece. Also, just from a design point, helps to have the contrast of the larger piece and then I can build more on top that's in a similar color. So I'll come back to the, the orange tones with the hearts in this smaller piece here and layer that on top. So now, even though I've included that print that's kind of a out there sort of choice, it's not overpowering even at this point because it's actually taken back to just a little bit here and there. Then I'm going to use that baby blue for behind the photo. And the notebook paper, rather than a solid uh, or any other print, was also inspired because a lot of the exhibit itself is made up of pieces of notebook paper. All the lyrics and things are, are written by hand on in old notebooks and they're displayed just one piece of paper at a time. And then with the photo, if you can see from there, this is really kind of ragged around the edge where it wasn't um, cut with a trimmer or anything. It was just kind of, it looks like part of it was cut with scissors where you're judging it to be straight, but it's not in any way. And then this part actually looks like it was um, folded and then uh, tried to, to tear it along the fold and get that line straight. Um, normally, with any other photo, I would take my trimmer and, and tidy that up, but I actually quite like the authenticity of having those edges and whatever whatever circumstance led the photo to have that frame. With the aging, it actually looks quite, um, quite flattering and artistic that way. So I'm going to leave it intact like that. But before I add the photo, I'm going to add a little bit of ink. I know that we think of ink as something that's really on trend in, in scrapbooking design at the moment, but it was amazing to see how many different things when you looked back at all these older pieces of paper that have been saved for so long and had all sorts of ink spots or age spots and it reminded me very much of how we use ink lately. So I'm just going to add a little bit of ink in brown um, with the idea that that will tone down some of the brightness and bring in a little bit more of a vintage color here to go with those with the 70s photo. See if I can get some on the layout and not just on the desk. Okay, I think some of that will get covered anyway, but that's all right. And that diagonal line just gives me that movement. Of course, um, that's kind of an adaptation because the naturally um, made age marks on, on the papers in the exhibit tend to be either all on one edge or all around all the edges because they come from where a piece of paper has been stored in a book or something and the paper is a little bit wider and just that strip at the edge gets aged and so uh, kind of a little different and um, different twist here because this is how I tend to use it but um, I wasn't quite sure that I would go with ink with these particular papers because um, there's already that watercolor tone, but going through my notes from the exhibit, I thought that that was um, a good adaptation of the natural things that we saw there. So next comes the photo, and I like the idea of having the photo um, taped on with some washi tape, but because the photo itself is quite old, instead of attaching the tape to the photo, I'm going to attach it to the paper to the layout because I'd rather have um, the photo just there rather than have the tape on top of the picture. And from the reverse of this photo I can even see that it was taped in somewhere 
some point in time. So from there, I can just oops, layer that in so that the tape comes right up to the edge. Then when I went through the journaling cards, I was trying to figure out which one would be best to include here because there's all different motifs and I actually went with one that's very plain um, and the color matches well but this came from the um, the fact that the whole exhibit is based on the idea of David Bowie is dot 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 and then as you go from room to room it finishes the sentence in different ways and so um, the fact that this has this spaces for writing seemed kind of like that fill in the blank and maybe that's a bit of a stretch but it was the closest I could get with that particular sheet of journaling cards so I'm going to add my writing on there and tuck it in along the side and then have my title. The space at the bottom will be good for the title, but I want the title to feed into the journaling. So I'm going to put the title up here, which means I need to pick something that's going to contrast on top of these papers so that you'll be able to read it. Well, if it's going to be inspired by David Bowie, then there's got to be some glitter involved somewhere. So definitely went with glittery thickers for the title and mimicking the idea of that dot 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 for the title into my journaling so that um, I could kind of create some sort of journaling here that would still be meaningful even though um, obviously this is a, an old photo that's um, too old to have specific memories that go along with that exact picture but instead could write about um, things yet to come. Now for embellishment you're gonna have to forgive me I'm gonna pull in something that's a little bit old but I'm hoping that some of you will still have it in your stash. I couldn't not pull in these stickers from Sassafras and yes the fact that I have a whole sheet may um, show you how much I decided to stock up on sassafras when they close their doors and let's just say I'm not gonna run out anytime soon but along with these older stickers that have that great um, color scheme to go along with this in the orange yellow and uh, two shades of blue how perfect is that I'm also gonna pull in something brand new and that's the two-piece exclusive um, star paper clips uh, one in navy and one in gold and at this point what was um, bothering me is that I liked the idea of using the tape up here but now I feel like this bit of tape is too um, odd because it doesn't tie into anything else on the page. So what I'd like to do is twofold. One, I want to add a little bit more embellishment to the tape and second, I want another grouping of embellishment somewhere else on the page that uses that tape a little bit too. So I'm thinking that um, the best way to place that would be to go onto the diagonal in this space here and have something that runs horizontally um, across from the journaling card to the edge of the page. So I'm going to go ahead and start by marking that space out with the washi tape. I can just use the gap in the two lines of journaling to fit the tape in between and run it to the edge of the page. If I can stick the tape on in a somewhat straight manner. There we go. And that means I can have one clip in each spot and I'll put the navy one down here because that gives me more contrast and the gold up here. And then I'll pull in some of these stickers. If you still have these types of stickers, they're my absolute favorite for layering because you can use just one sheet and they all layer really well because you have a couple large pieces and then and the pieces get smaller and smaller. So they're graduated at a really nice size. So that pretty much if you take one big, one medium, and one small, they will stack up with pop dots absolutely perfectly. So I'm going to um, take one large one and cut it in half so that I can use half over here and half up here behind the photo and then build with the smaller stickers on top of that. There's that larger circle sticker cut into two pieces so that it can be in the background of both and I decided it looked better underneath the tape rather than on top of it and then a medium size a star for each side and then a small sticker and the stickers work really well if you pile them up on top or if you kind of do a little explosion out to the side so I've kind of done the explosion effect with the paper clips and the smaller stickers and then I have two more stickers left to go and I just wanted to show you that sometimes the placement isn't necessarily what you would think so this grouping is larger and has more space so my mind thought that the larger heart would go well here and the smaller heart up here with this smaller grouping of embellishments but in truth if I used this smaller piece here 
To me, it felt that this heart was trying to compete with this star rather than the star being a real focal point of that embellishment grouping. And meanwhile, up here, it, it's not that this heart doesn't work here, but it almost disappears. If I brought in this heart, even though it's the same color or same size as the star, the fact that it's a different color actually makes me think that it works better up here because the blue, the contrast of the blue grabs your attention and then all of the yellow and orange kind of fades into a nice thematic background where this little heart, if I bring it down here, becomes a nice little part of the explosion. So sometimes it's not the combination that you'll expect so it's nice to be able to move things around and see where they will look best and from here I'm just going to add a little bit of writing below the photo mat down here so that I have um, the date and things like that in place and if you had more to write here you've got all this space at the bottom this kind of page design could definitely hold lots and lots of journaling and I will say that seeing um, so much handwriting in the exhibit really reminded me of, of why many of us use our own handwriting in our albums and that it's not to become some sort of artistic thing but it's very much part of our personality and lets that show through so um, definitely something I would suggest because uh, a lot of people commented walking through the exhibit that David Bowie's handwriting was not as they expected that since he's such a um, put together showman that maybe they thought his handwriting would be a bit smoother and more polished um, but that seeing the his lyrics written in his own hand, including all the scribbles out and arrows to move things around, really made it real, made it quite real in that he's not some sort of um, uh, otherworldly creature after all. He is quite human and makes mistakes when he's writing just like the rest of us. So here's my finished page and your overall impression may be that after all that talking about taking inspiration from the exhibit, it looks awful lot like uh, my usual pages but part of that is definitely an inspiration in itself because walking through the exhibit there's definitely a message of being true to one's own style no matter how much criticism um, or public eye was on it and uh, David Bowie was certainly somebody who decided what he liked and stuck to it even if it sounded like um, it might be a little bit uh, to the side of the norm and it certainly worked for him so that was a, a nice uh, message to come out of the exhibit as well so this week I certainly um, hope that you will stay true to your style but your challenge is a little more difficult this week than it has been. You've had it a little easy with the last few challenges using pattern paper and um, this week I want you to take your inspiration from something. It doesn't have to be this exhibit of course, it can be anything that is outside the scrapbooking world and when you upload your layout I'm looking for you to tell us in that box below your layout what you started with as your inspiration outside the scrapbooking world and how you translated it to paper or digital scrapbooking. Tell us a little bit about how you took your creative process on a little meander through something that was a little bit different and uh, why it inspired you and how your page came to be inspired by that but true to yourself. I hope you really enjoy it and I'll include a few links if you want to read more about the exhibit. Thanks so much for this question, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.